we are in the Heidelberg Cherry region and we have eight different types of cherries. Um, they have names like Windner Schwarze, Burbacher Frühbraune and many more. These type of cherries are nearly distinguished. We decided in the last two years uh, to make cherry products again. Cheers everyone, I'm here in Breitenbrunn. It's a small town near Vienna, it's about 30 minutes from Vienna and I'm here with Andrea who is a cherry farmer and a cherry producer and we are going to talk about how she founded her business, why she is passionate about cherries and what is it like to own a cherry business. Andrea, thank you very much for having me here today. You're welcome. I'm really interested in that. Why are you so interested in cherries? Yeah, I thought it is very important to um, save the different type of cherries so to save the biodiversity because many of these um, special old sorts of cherries um, are nearly distinguished now so nowadays you cannot find these special cherry trees anymore they all have a different taste a different look and a very special uh, yeah each kind is very special to me and I thought it's very important to save them for the future. So what was your career like then? Have you always been in a cherry farming family? No, um, I studied tourism management. Oh. I've worked in Congress <laughs> organizing and yeah, made different kinds of events and also in the hotel industry. And yeah, I liked it, but I preferred to help my mother Mm -hmm. and she was um, a hobby cherry farmer so the, the special old types that are growing in our region and mm -hmm. only in our region um, my mother preserved them so she replanted these trees and she started to make different kind of products out of it like cherry jams, um, cherry chutney, juice, sparkling cherry wine and I really was interested in helping her and she also made a cherry festival and yeah so I spent many times in helping my mother um, for her hobby and it took so much time that I didn't really have time for my work so I decided to quit my job and to start getting a full-time cherry farmer and producer and this type of work um, is in this type of job is since 60 years nobody did it in full time anymore. In our region we always were a wine growing and cherry growing region. In the 1960s it was quite common but then the yeah. wine growing was very promoted by the state. So the state said okay start wine growing in the wine growing business you can earn money not with growing fruits. Okay. So um, many people we cut all the trees to um, have more place for the vineyard. So in these days, in the 1960s, we had 50,000 50, trees between uh, five villages only. And now there are about 8,000 trees left. Some types and some sorts are nearly distinguished, like the Breitenbrunner Bolaga, mm -hmm. which is a very special type because there's only one tree left. And we replanted this sort, so we can we preserved it for the future. But it needs about eight to ten years until we can earn fruits from this tree. You want to try? Yes, please. Yeah. So we are here eating and drinking all the time. So it's a really nice type of interview today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And the taste of this cherry is not typical like a cherry. Mm -hmm. No, it is. It's not. Some people think it's a plum. Mm -hmm. When you don't know that you are tasting a cherry, you think it's plum. It tastes so nice. So we have 80% fruit in it and 20% sugar, so it's very less sugar added. And this is the tree that where you only have one yeah, left? Yeah, where we only have one left. So as I see your profession, it's more than just producing goods, it's also about preserving nature. Yes, and cherries. that's also very important for me. Okay. And the next one is also one of these old types. So in general, we have eight sorts. From each sort, we do their own jam. 
mm -hmm. so you can taste, taste the biodiversity. So okay. now you can taste this one. This one is very famous because the Empress Maria Theresia, mm -hmm. she liked this cherry, this type of cherry a lot. And it is called the Joyser Herzkirche. It's really nice, it's really sweet. And this tastes more like cherry. This tastes more like cherry. It's a black cherry, it's like really big. You can see it here on the picture. I like this one. So in in really has like this size. Okay. Wow. It, it's really big and has a nice cherry flavor. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's also one of these old types. So you make those jams yourself? Yes, I do it myself. With a family recipe, I guess. So yes, family recipe, but it, it's it's not a um, secret. It's the same recipe with every type of cherry, mm -hmm. so you can taste the differences. Nice. And you tasted the difference yeah, between yeah. the first one and the second it's one. It's very different. The difference is not because of more sugar or less sugar. The difference is the salt itself. In the supermarkets, they don't they sell cherries as cherry. You don't know that there exist about 600 different types of cherries. Many people know, for example, the apple. A green apple tastes different than a red one. Mm -hmm. And you know some kind of types like golden delicious. We want to... Um, tell our customers that there are differences and that you can taste it, you can feel it and also in when you do our guided cherry tours you can see it. You not only produce jam, you also no. have a very big product range. I saw from uh, juice to cherry uh, sparkling wine um, to the jams to, to other things. So how did this come about that you have such a variety of products? I try to stay creative. I don't like to do every day the same. Like only making cherry jam, it's by, yeah, after some weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You're sick of cherry jam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can you still So then I'm happy yourself? to do something else. Yes, I can. Because some people, when they produce something, they say like, oh no. No, I can. I, and I really like to drink my sparkling cherry wine. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we should, by the way, we should. Yes, we should try. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> and it's a dry one. It's also as natural as it could be. It's not sweet. It's nice, it's not, I like it that it's not sweet because usually when you have these cherry products you think yeah. about sweet, sweet stuff. No, this is not sweet but at all. But this is made of um, fermented cherries. Mm -hmm. So we make out of cherries wine. Okay. It's not a wine out of grapes mm -hmm. where you add some cherry flavor and something red, like a red color. It is made out of cherries. And also I saw you do uh, pasta. With cherries? Yes, we do. Um, it's made out of our cherry juice. So we have cherry juice with no sugar added. So it's it's a directly pressed juice. And there is no sugar, no conservation stuff, nothing inside. And we, t we use this juice to make the pasta. Because to, to create pasta you need water. And instead of water, we use the cherry juice. It's very creative because when you hear, oh, I'm a cherry farmer, you think it's like 100 years ago, people go to the fields, get the cherries <laughs> and you know, but I think yeah. the average person would think like this, but when I heard about all the products that you're doing, I was like, wow, it's really interesting from like one fruit or different sorts of that fruit, there's such a big variety what you can do and it's a really modern take, like cherry pasta, that's nothing that you can see no. anywhere. Uh, yeah, it is. And also the juice, um, there exists on the market no cherry juice out of sweet cherries and mm -hmm. these are belong all to the sweet cherry type um, with no sugar added and with no um, conservation things in it. And all this knowledge that you have about cherries is basically you shared it with your mother you said? Yeah, also right. from many, many, from older, pe older people who live in our region like they are 80 years old or more who can remember how it was former days like the cherries were the third the first fruits in the year so many people earned their first money during the cherry harvest so they have many they remember a lot of things like i bought my first bike because With of the cherry, the cherry money. money oh wow and so i have many i, I talk to people to to people who live here mm -hmm. and ask them how it was some of the children know it, but they don't know that there is 
that it is important you know it, mm. it always depends on how important things are for you like for example your mother tells you always the same stories and you're like ah, oh, blah 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 yeah so that's it but for me it sounds interesting so it's a different kind of um, yeah it depends how you look on the on the things you are an entrepreneur. You have a startup because your um, company is only two years old. Mm -hmm. Don't you think it would be interesting also for young people to realize that when we talk about startups today, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tech startup? That because oh yes, this is this is something that is really. I mean, in Austria, it's quite special. Uh, when you hear about startup, everybody thinks about somebody who created an app or made something digital. So for me, my business is only two years old. I see myself as a startup because I'm working in a business that didn't exist now for 60 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm a cherry farmer and producer and this kind of job nobody is doing. So why can't I say that I'm a startup too? There are many things like, as you said, you think of cherry farmer 100 years ago and picking the cherries. The thing is that the cherry harvest is still the same like it was 100 years ago because I don't have a cherry plantage mm -hmm. so they are not growing each cherry tree, tree one, one row by row they are uh, spread it in the wine yards and so I need to go there with a tall ladder and to go on the trees it, it's not possible to to make the harvest more economical mm -hmm. faster so it's the same way you did it 100 years ago. Probably also because you can't even use a machine because every tree is different. They are too right? old, they are too old, they, they, they break. When you use any kind of machine, they are like machines who shake the tree and all the, the cherries fall down in a net. Mm -hmm. So we, ta we tried this machine once and we killed the 100 year old tree. Mm -hmm. it, it broke like totally in the middle and again like this. So this is something that doesn't work with old trees. This works with, with trees who are made for these machines. You know, you can, you mm -hmm. can make trees that, they're, that they are more elastic and more like plastic. <laughs> if it's then a really like biodiverse and natural product. No, no, it's not a natural that. product anymore. <laughs> it's a fruit made in a laboratory and yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with nature. As a startup, budget is usually a topic. What's your main uh, distribution or marketing channel? It's direct marketing. I, I try to make an, an online shop, but my products are very, I have to explain a lot. As I, I talk now for hours, maybe, <laughs> 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 to explain the, uh, the different taste. I mean, you had now the possibility to taste it. Mm -hmm. So you know there is a difference and you understand, okay, cherry is not cherry. Every cherry is different. But to transform this information online, it's very hard. Because people don't really like to read long stories. Mm -hmm. And it's not that easy. So online shop is for me like a really, really small percentage. And the most important for me is to be on as many events as I can and markets and um, conventions mm -hmm. so yeah I'm very often I'm in Vienna or in Graz so in bigger cities yeah so I'm nearly every weekend I'm on markets and I also do my cherry tours my guided cherry tours where people can see um, the region like the Leiterberg and the lake we're living next to the Neusiedlersee lake there you can see the the cherry trees growing spread it in the wine yards and yeah, I tell all the stories about our different types and how it was to live here and how it is to live here and then we taste the jams and the sparkling cherry wine and cherry strudel. So I think that's an invitation that when you are in Vienna it's not far to come here. I think you should try. It's only 40 minutes by 40 train. 40 minutes by train? Yes. So really easy and if you come by train you can even drink and try the, the wine, the cherry wine and also the strudel. So it's, it's really a nice experience to come here. But going back to um, your life as an entrepreneur, I, I would be interested in what is it like to found a company in Austria? To found it, it's quite easy. I mean, you just go 
to a, a city authority. This is very easy, but it's not easy to, to keep it alive. Because in Austria you, have, you pay very high taxes and yes. people think that you are not a big boss, you are kind of rich to buy your Ferrari mm -hmm. and yeah, you treat people like, I don't know, yeah, in a bad way. But yeah, this is something, I don't know why it is like this in Austria, but when you own, when you have your own business, it means equal with you are rich. Mm -hmm. And also you don't probably care about people and all that? You don't care about people, you don't care about nothing, you're only just rich and sitting in your tower and you're not working the whole day, it's just you're rich by doing nothing. And this is what many people think. And this is something I don't understand because when, as you know, when you found a business, you are working yeah, 24, 24 hours a day in, I don't have any weekend because only on weekends you can go on a market or any kind of event where people have time to try your products. I mean, on a Monday, when everybody is in the office, nobody's interested in trying products and drinking some sparkling cherry wine. I mean, people only have the time on weekends. Mm. So I'm working on Saturday, I'm working on Sunday, and on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm answering to emails, I'm uh, going to the, to the local restaurants and gastronomy to deliver my shoes and all my products. So, yeah, um, it's an everyday business and I really love to do it. I love my job, but I definitely work more than I did before mm -hmm. when I worked as Congress manager because there I worked from 9 to 5. That's it. I went home from the office and I, it, I never took some, some work home. But now it's different. I mean, it's it's really um, you're all the time thinking about the business, about new products. It's hard work, definitely. What's your recipe to just get rid of the stress? Hmm. For now, I can't say. You. <laughs> <laughs> too busy even thinking about. It. Yeah, too busy to think about it. No, I I have no idea. I mean, for this year, I. I learned a lot in the last two years, like I thought, okay, I'm not that important that I cannot go on holiday, for example, on holiday means I go to Salzburg for three days and uh, enjoy other lakes in Austria or something like this. And I thought, yeah, I'm not that important, I don't have to put a yes. yeah, the, the out of message, office yeah. message in my, in my email account, I don't have to put it because, yeah, I'm... I mean, if I don't answer for three days, what happens? Yeah, I think I got 50 phone calls while, <laughs> while I was lying at the lake. By the time it, it wasn't really holiday. I mean, when I'm at home, I'm not that busy like this one day on the lake. <laughs> so, so I learned, okay, next time I will put an out of office message. Probably a good idea. Probably, because people won't call me on my phone when they know that I'm on holiday. So things like that I'm learning, but yeah, otherwise it's also my business, so I'm also happy when somebody calls me and is interested mm -hmm. in my products. So yeah, it's like 50-50 thing. But how to really relax, I don't know. I'm <laughs> in, my, in my spare free times, I'm very busy in having any uh, family fest family parties or something like this like my aunt had her 70th birthday this weekend or uh, friends to marry or get children mm -hmm. so things like this and I really have spare time for my friendship and for my family so yeah once you have the routines it gets a bit better but I do agree like people sometimes romanticize being a founder I hear so often oh I want to be a founder because of my work-life balance and then I'm like well, um, then stay in your nine to five job if yeah. this is important, because if you don't do it with a passion and you want to do it all the time, it's gonna be really tough. You shouldn't see it as a job. You see it as your passion, I, I don't know, but when you see it as a job and when you start thinking about how many time you're working per day, I think you get crazy. I think so too. But I think all these, uh, the shows that we talked about before, like about startups and all this, they transmit a picture in the media that it's about the lifestyle, it's like we all wear hoodies. Um, yeah, and we also hit. And we are in these co-working spaces <laughs> yes. and all that, but 
people forget that it's actually 99% of it is hard work. And don't. did you ever try to rent a co-working space in Vienna? Uh, I did it in Hong Kong. And I, I mean, guess it's you need to be rich to afford this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not, it's really not easy to, to have a lifestyle like um, did it transport it in the television how a startup is living. It's, it's hard to explain to somebody um, because now there is no cherry harvest. So people ask me, what are you doing now? <laughs> so you, it, it, it feels a week, your work. So there, there's this big question always. So they don't see that it takes time to, for example, design these to mm -hmm. make all these texts and all these there are also many um, rules that I have to do by law what needs to be written on a cherry chain and and so on so and also all the marketing the um, yeah and also the direct market and to deliver the products into um, different kind of shops and restaurants these all takes time Mm -hmm. And it must have been in the beginning really tough from like a 9 to 5 job where you you have some rules, you have some tasks and suddenly you do everything. Yeah. Not only your special work field. So how, how was this for you? It's still hard because some things I never did before. For example, when I have an idea of producing a, a leaflet like this and I know how it should look like. I always called somebody and told them please can you do me this this and this and after two days this guy or this woman came with the finished leaflet and I was like oh thank you that's great so now I try to do it on my own mm -hmm. I'm not a graphic designer I have no idea about graphic design programs but yeah Google tells me how to do yeah. it <laughs> Google is your friend I realize Google that is my friend really and so this is how I learned some of these products um, and how to produce things on your own. I mean, this kind I couldn't, this was a graphic designer, mm -hmm. but all the text that is written on here and which paper and what to take, this was all my decision. And it's not so easy because there are so many things that you can choose. Graphic design and also PR, public mm -hmm. re relation are the two things that I really would love to give it to somebody else but at the moment I can't afford it mm. um, because I do a lot of public relation like now is the cherry blossom time so I write the text about the cherry blossom tours that I'm doing and um, yeah and I send this text to every newspaper that I know and hope that somebody writes about it mm. so yeah they did so I was very lucky this year or you were really good at it <laughs> so, yeah maybe I don't know and also last year Prince Charles tried my cherry products nobody would have known it if I hadn't written a, a text about it because this was during the visit of Charles and Camilla when they came to Vienna yes and they tr they, they got came to Vienna and Prince Charles uh, said that he's interested in cherry products because he bought in Romania cherry trees old type of cherry trees and he is a farmer a mm -hmm. hobby farmer so he was very interested in cherry products so the organizer of the of the Prince Charles and Camilla visit called me if I could send some cherries but in April we don't have mm -hmm. cherries so I sent them the different sort of cherry gem and Prince Charles and Camilla tried them I wasn't allowed to to be there but they sent me a picture when they had my my gem mm -hmm. and they really liked it so I got this photo and I thought okay with this photo I have to do something I need to write a public relation text so at four o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep of all of this. Oh my God, <laughs> Prince Charles tasted my cherry chip. Um, I, th I saw, oh, I got an email. Oh, they sent me a picture. So I sat down to the computer and I wrote the text, but it, it took me hours mm -hmm. to write this text because, I'm, as you see, it's not so easy for me to take something short. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 
and I sent it to every newspaper where I found on the on the website the official uh, email address. So and everybody took it. So it's also sometimes just to be bold and just send it out to be on time. Mm -hmm. But then you need to be. It should be in their email inbox at seven in the morning. Yeah. Because at, at what time do they write it? They write during the day the newspaper for the next day, so it should be ready. So I also had a like normal job before I founded my business, and I always read these stories. Oh, you should immediately found from university or at university. Mm -hmm. In my case, I was actually happy that I had other experience and also for me sometimes psychologically it was good to know like you have something you can go back to uh, what do you think about it now I need from everything that I learned in my jobs in my studies at school I, I use from everything a little bit so there are many things that I now know why it was important for me to learn that but I would have never found it after studies because I think it is important to have work experience and to know different companies and to know how they work mm. and what you like and what you don't like. When we think about success, what does success mean to you? Is it just like your goal in like three years you want to have X profit or whatever? But what, as a person, what do you think about success? Um, I think success is for me, when a customer calls me and tells me that he likes his, the products and he wants more. So when he, he buys more products or for example I had people coming once to a charity tour and they booked it four times already. And last Saturday they celebrated their birthday with me and with doing the charity tour again with many friends and then this makes means success to me. When somebody really enjoyed it to be in our region or enjoyed my product so he buys again. These are things that are success for me. How do you deal with anxiety of failure? Like, um, Do you wake up at night sometimes thinking like, what am I doing? What if this fails? Yes, yes, this, this happens I guess to every entrepreneur because it is a thing that uh, it's hard to finance that and also it's hard that you don't have any time for your friends and you really need a partner who um, helps you and you need a partner who's, who stands with you and, and is not like angry when you are again two nights in Vienna and after that one night in Graz and then you go to Turin to another market or things like that um, I'm very often not at home and I'm yeah, many parties or something that my friends are celebrating. I couldn't join because I was working. So you really need friends who understand that. That's also something that is very hard sometimes when you know, okay, she's celebrating her 30th, 30th birthday and there's a big band coming and don't know what, but I can't join mm. because I'm at this moment somewhere in a business networking stuff so and can't leave and, yeah. I can't leave immediately and these are things that are sometimes really hard because not everybody of your friends understands that. Isn't it also a way to realize who the real friends are sometimes? It is, yes it is, definitely. If you think back to the 20 year old Andrea, what advice would you give her? Um, hmm. Yeah, I would say help more your mother. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing the right thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know because I think everything that I did, every, every, every step that I took in my private life and also in my work life made of me the person that I'm now. So I would say, yeah, do everything the same way, but help more your mother <laughs> <laughs> so all the mothers who, who listen now will say like oh yeah she's right yeah Daughter, listen to your mothers <laughs> or even your own mother <laughs> yes <laughs> okay thank you very much for taking so much time like the it was really nice to welcome. 
get the whole tour to taste all the products it's amazing what you're doing here you can be proud of yourself i think thank you and also tell yourself that and um yeah cheers, cheers.